Hello everybody, welcome to another Facebook Live. It's so, so exciting to be sharing ideas and inspiration with you. So a big warm welcome to everybody who's joined us. Wow, what a fantastic week it has been. So super busy. I don't know about you guys, but we've got beautiful weather here in Derbyshire. And just before I get stuck into Babylon Brook and... Um, Reminds me of so many childhood memories. I just wanted to share a couple of little things with you. So tomorrow we're getting a very, very special um, visit here at Highlight Crafts. And I'm a little bit excited about it because one of the owners of Cadence, the paint company, are coming to see us. And yesterday I had an email last night and it was so... I don't know, I can't, I can't think of another word other than overwhelming. And it was, when I can share more detail with you and, I, and I've got all the clearance, then I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the names and everything. But what I wanted to just say was, it's from, it was a children's art club, after school art club. And from memory, the children were between sort of um, seven and 11. Oh my goodness their first work that they did, decorative painting, was phenomenal. Boy, do they put us adults to shame. It was literally their first go after watching a few videos. I'm, I'm gonna go to the school to give them a class because I just have to. I have to create that passion and that excitement, but I felt really emotional about it. So it's been, a, it's been one of those kinds of weeks with a lot going on. And of course, it's our 10th anniversary at Doncaster Crafting Live this coming weekend. So um, super, super exciting. But let's get this kicked off. A big hello to everybody who's just joined us. We're gonna talk about Babbling Brook. Now, Babbling Brook is made up of two sections. It's made up of Babbling Brook itself and also by the stream. Now, what you'll notice is you've got nested dies here. I particularly love the swans because I'm going to show you a great way of doing some decoupage and getting those little signets nestled into the back of their mummy as they go for a ride. And then I also, just before we go on to the next one, just want to point out the otters. I mean, talk about cute. Do you know otters hold hands when they're in the water? And look at the one at the top. He's just floating. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So that's Babbling Brook. This is by the stream. Now this is all your things like your wild garlic, your mustard, your wild orchids, and also um, the last one, which is, no, the first one, which is our Oh, well, okay. So, <laughs> so and, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it's happened already. Um, Andrew can't pronounce it. I can't even see it. <laughs> oh, we're going with the jewel. Okay. V E R D U R E, the jewel. Okay. Um, thanks. Um, Jess and the design team <laughs> but if you want both of them we've got them as a complete collection lots of you have already bought this um find them on the highlight website and in fact I think they're going to be appearing on Crate and Craft at some point and please don't forget the clear pay so I'm going to go through what you're actually getting and this was just super super fun because if you look at otters and the way that they live they love a little bit of water, but then they build their dams with all of the elements that go over the top. So what I did when I was prepping for this um, demonstration, I actually got all of my little pieces and they've, um, and I've made some of them super, super sturdy by sticking multi two pieces together so that I can build up my, my dam. And I can literally build these pieces up and you can see how much fun it's going to be. And what I'm looking forward to is, and I'm just going to go down to the lower one here, is building up elements of it, putting in all these little pieces. So I'm going to use the stones as where the otters would go and then creating little, little, almost like little bridges so that they can be walking along them. Imagine how that is going to look. 
massive hello to lots of you. Um, to Pearl, to Donna, to Catherine, to Kay, um, to Teresa. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. It's lovely to actually hear from you. And also to hear your comments on the collection. So thank you guys. That's really, really important that the feedback we do appreciate. So you can see how I'm gonna build this up, which I'm quite loving. Now, for those of you that watched the Zoom class I did the other day, when I did um, one with all of our garden gnomes, I actually created a cascade of water from the fountain and I used my pin flare glue gel. Now I've been monitoring that sample really closely. It hasn't actually changed color or gone yellow or anything. I'm just thinking amongst this babbling brook, I'm going to use this again to get some water flow. So I'll show you how I did that. But look how many dyes you've got. Look how many different elements. So that's the first part of this collection. And that one we call Riverbank. Now I'm going to go straight to the otters. So we've got a pair of little otters here that are just snuggled up and would literally could be swimming under the water. I, this one's my personal favourite because he's sitting on his back and he's just super comfy. We've got one coming out of the water. Another one's just having his um, lunch. And then this one could be hiding amongst all of those different pieces of woodland. And, and the logs, look at how you can create... Now, if I got these and I put a few of them together and I just created like a, almost like a little hideaway. So he's going into those elements. So usable, so um, well thought through so that you've got pieces going in different directions. And of course, that is called the um, raft. Now, this one is one of my personal favourites because it's going to be great for weddings and special occasions. But for scene building, this little collection will be so useful. So it's Gwyneth and Arthur. Now, we've put each of the reflections on the actual outline die, so you can see how big that element of it is. Three little signets and, of course, our swans. So that is your first set, which is... Um, by the bubbling brook, I beg your pardon. Now we're gonna go by the stream, and these are our lovely florals, and it's the detail, it's the elements that we've got in here that really make it look like it's giving you that sort of real look of true nature. This one's called Wild Orchid. This one is, um, I'm gonna say it's Verdure. So let's say Verdure, Ha ha, free. Parlez-vous français? Um, oh, uh, <laughs> that's not good, is it? Um, so this is just a collection of lovely elements that you would find by a brook or by the river. Then we've got our wild garlic. Oh gosh, there's a place in Derbyshire when you drive through it and um, you get the smell of wild garlic. It's just exquisite. And the flowers themselves are so pretty. Little tiny yellow stamens on them, which are always really bright and colourful. And then the wild garlic before it actually comes out, such a tight little head. And then the last one is the mustard. So they're all of the different designs. Right, I know what I haven't done. I haven't shown you this. So a couple of them I'll show you like this, um, this way. Here we go. Let's look at it like this. So, wow. Oh my goodness me. Um, Kath, you have done us proud. A huge thank you to this. But I'm gonna just start to turn it so you can see the detail of where the elements are. I mean, this is really storytelling. Oh guys, can you just tell me if you would like us to bring out a storybook die because I'm thinking it might be something that we probably could do with. Um, I'm going to bring in this one. So this is another one that I absolutely love. And the way that we've got this detail. Now, we're not going to be sticking with 3D forever going forward. But it's a real opportunity for us to play with it right now. And then make yourself a box out of construction acetate to put all of these in. 
But look at there, the way that actually we've got other elements from other collections coming in here as well, which do look good. And the otters, the otters all together, so they look like they're playing. And then here's another one. Love that this works so well. These freestanding cards, you know, these are what we call our landscape cards, so, or tent folds. So they open up and the back of the card provides the support, as you can see there. And the fact that you're using your die, your foundation die, to be able to get that dimension. And then finally, using traditional die cuts. And this is using our heart aperture. And how good is that? I mean, wow, what a beautiful design. And you'll notice here, um, Kath's put in the, um, this is from the pub where we, which we had on recently. She's got the dragonflies, got some little bluebells up there, loads of other elements and digging into those different elements. So we've got a collection that works as a standalone collection or with your two red robin dies. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to build a card and I'm going to build myself a dam. So I'm going to put that together so that we get this dimension. Now, I've already got, and thank you to everybody who's joined because, wow, there's quite a few of us now, which is lovely. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just glue two of these together. But I'm not, I, I need them to be a little bit stronger than they, current, than they are individually. But I'm not going to glue them directly on top of one another. I also want to just point out this. This is actually um, a, a printer error. So I've got this little line that you've got running through here. I'm not, it didn't make me throw this away because it was too useful. There was too much in here that I thought I could use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this collection and I'm just going to go round the top of these stones. And then I'm going to drop down to here and I'm going to go round the top of this stone. And I'm going to be going all the way back up to here and getting this element. Now, all the charisma can be found on the Highlight Crafts website. And if you are not already on our database, please sign up because we are going to be doing so much free education and tuition that you really aren't going to want to miss out. So that is going to be the front of my card. Now, to get some depth to this, I'm going to use my foam on a roll. And I'm going to take that and run it along the whole of the bottom because I know that I didn't cut away from that part. And then I've got this part here and so I've, if I follow the line of where I cut I could take my tape right up here but I want remember I want to build a dam so I'm going to put a bit of tape there and a bit of tape there and I'm going to leave a gap in the middle and we'll backfill that with glue gel if we need to so let's start off by creating this part of dimension now, I know that a lot of you are loving our SVG files and we've already promised that we will bring this one out for you. So, yes, we are going to make sure that you get this um, as an SVG collection. So I'm now going to take this onto my mat, look at where I've got a straight line. So I'm going to now check where I'm going to glue to be able to give myself a score line and strengthen the back. And what you'll notice here is that on this one, I've got it double-sided. So I've got the top layer and the base layer. I've got it double-sided to about there. On this one, I've gone double-sided to that area above. So overall, in most parts of this die, you have got a second layer whether it be at the top where I've glued it or down here where I've put it on foam. But that becomes my card opening, okay? So that's where we're gonna start. Now we need to build our dam. So I've got all of my elements and I'm just gonna get out a load of logs. And I've got 
tons of them. <laughs> so some of them I've already stuck together and made dub, um, double thickness. And they're the ones that are going to go off the edges. And I can feel them when I'm picking them up. So I can feel that some of them are sturdier than others. And also I was doing them a little sneaky thing because when I was cutting them, I was cutting more than one at once. And every now and again, one of them slipped slightly and I ended up with a little bit of the white edge showing. And I just used those ones on the base. So I, I didn't throw anything away, even if it miscut, I kept it so that I could use it for um, other parts of my design. So I'm gonna start by building my dam. So I'm tucking it behind the rocks that I've got here. And to do that, I'm just gonna take some of my three mil foam. And by using three mil, I know that it's going to sit behind here without coming over the edges. And I'm just gonna pick this up. And this is what is so good about Two Red Robins. Do you know every element of it, look at how that now just lends itself to one of the foundation pieces of the dam. Now I've got another piece here, and I think this one could go just across there. And to keep the depth and make sure that I've got, I keep things light and I get the dimension behind the design that I need, I'm just gonna use different thicknesses of foam. And for those of you that haven't seen me do this before, I'll just, I'll just show you once very quickly. I'm folding this over in half and then cutting through like this so that my scissors aren't touching the sticky bits and I have got the carrier sheet on both sides. So it just keeps that nice and clean for me. So that's gonna go there and that part of my log is going to go just there. Now I can actually catch this piece down here. And if I catch that little piece down, then it, I'm starting to get a shape in the design. I know that because they ram in lots of logs, you know, our little otters are really quite clever at this and um, our beavers that are building dams as well. So I'm just gonna build and put a couple more of these in just here. So I've got them overlapping a little bit and getting that extra, those extra bits. And then I'm going to pick a couple more of the smaller ones. So let me pick up one here and just tuck that just there. And then I need a, another one that's gonna come across here. So you can see how we're building this dam up. And I've just built a little bit of glue on my mat. So I'm just gonna pick that bit of glue up and use that, but I'm resting on the top of that rock. So I've got that resting. I need another piece that I want to go across here because I want that to be like a little bridge for him to walk on. So we need the flat glue there, and then I need a single layer of glue. In fact, this one will do it. I'll do double because it's not very thick. And I'm just gonna pop that in there. And then that's gonna go over the top like that. So I've built my, my most of my dam. I'm going to put myself a log that just happens to be just floating or just caught on the side, just there. So it looks like it might just be floating down the river and we'll put some stuff there. And just behind here, we're gonna put some smaller rocks and pebbles. So you can see how we can extend it. And I look like I've got some little smaller pebbles. So this, um, do you know what, um, Margaret, you are right about beavers building the dams, not otters. But um, when we did it, I wanted to make otters and then I had all the woods and sticks and stuff and I couldn't resist building dams. So our otters are just on holiday. They've just borrowed, they're just borrowing the beaver's house for a few days. 
if, if that's okay, if nobody minds. Um, it's just got to be, or they're visiting. They're just the visitors. <laughs> right. Now we've got, look at this. They've been busy, haven't they? Look at this lot of little lobsters. So, excuse me, I'm going to get my beavers and my otters mixed up, aren't I? It's just, I can't help it. Right, so we could have him going across. I can have him. <laughs> just look at this. Look at him. How cute is that? And look at, look at the water here, using that to actually make him look like he's in the water. So let's just get that and pop him down. And then I'll pop that there. And then I think these two, well, they're just literally tucked in so that you can see there. I think Andrew's wanting to print one off and put it on his laptop. I'm trying to decide which one I want to have here. I think this one, that one, he's just looking out because he's having a, he's actually, he's just got out, look. He's just got out the water. There, let's put a, pop him up here. Um, so, um, and I'm going to pop him just there because he has just got out the water. Now, oh, look, at, so we've got, we're creating this little story where it's all starting to come to life. And you could be extending the back of this and putting in some more stones and taking it so that it's longer and I love this in undulation that you're getting at the back of the design and then we come into these flowers and it's this wild garlic and those lilies that are just the orchids that are just so clever so I am going to move this away for a moment and look at how I can just build up the elements why does the time go so fast this is just I mean it's like oh my goodness me I just don't want the time to go so quickly um so you're building in putting in this foliage and giving yourself all these extra pieces and I'm so glad you guys are getting to see this before Doncaster well they're gonna be for sale at Doncaster absolutely um, the deal will be the same, you know, no, there'll be no better deal than we've got. But yes, absolutely, they'll be at Doncaster. And I'm sort of a little bit excited about going to Doncaster. 10th anniversary. Miss Nancy Watts coming, which I haven't had Nancy at an event for such a long time. This is, that's going to be amazing. Um, it's a long time since Nancy's been there. Um, for the workshop on the Friday, we're dressing up. We've got different projects. And look at how that has just started to come together. And, um, and I've checked my balls. I've got enough bingo balls because those of you that were there last time will know that I had a bit of a disaster with those. Um, and I've got a lit some little ducks now. Ah, so some of you have been um, checking out our otters and otters apparently use abandoned dams to actually hide from predators. So they're just, and, and look, the swans are here and the little swans are playing on their, on their, on the otter's tummy. Okay, right, let's stick these together and look at how we could decoupage. So first of all, when, I, when I'm looking and trying to decide where to decoupage, true decoupage is built from the background up. So anything that's really close to you, is that the closest you see it is the closest piece that you're going to be. And it's almost as if you can touch it, you can pick it off. And once you've taken that layer off, you pick up and you take the next layer off and you deassemble it just like that. So in theory... The pieces that we would be cutting would be this leaf here and this one here. But if we do that, we're going to be left with a very, very flimsy stem and a very flimsy stem here. So the way that I am going to work this is I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to take this round that stem. So I'm doing a little bit of a cheat, really. Um, I'm going to also take off that leaf but I might use that for something else. And I'm now just gonna trim out that piece there. 
and then it means I need to go into this part of it and trim out that piece and that piece. So I've created that little gap and that is now going to sit on top here. So with my applicator, and thank you to everybody who's watching. I do really appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to come and see what we're doing. Sorry about the mess. Um, well, not so, not proper sorry, just a bit sorry. Um, okay, this has actually got a bit gunged up. So I'm going to go in with my the back of my glue tip applicator. And that needs to just come out. Can you see there? how that's now pushing out, that is going to be okay. So I've got glue all over my fingers. So I'm just going to use that piece. And even though a bit of it's quite firm, it will just give us a bit of height. And I'm going to go down here and down there and a little bit in the middle of there. So this now will go on here like this. And that is the dimension that we've got. So we've only put one layer on, but we've given ourselves a little bit of dimension. This piece that I've got left here, I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the front and I'm going to tuck that behind like that. Just so that it's not wasted, so that I make the most of both elements. Now, this is ready and I'm going to take it in between the two layers. So I've got some extra dimension. I could take, actually, no, I am going to take it between those two layers. So the best way of doing this will be to put my glue on here. I'm just going to give you a quick reminder of the collections I've got. Altogether, it's our Babbling Brook story, but it's combined with By the Stream and you get all of it to be able to make the projects like the one I'm showing you now, where I'm layering up the design, getting the dimension, just putting that in place. And then I'm just going to tuck that through there like that. So I'm happy that I've got this side of it assembled and it's looking really good and it's very firm and sturdy. Now let's look at this um, garlic. This piece, I absolutely like the way it's tucked behind. It works really well. It's quite flimsy, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue in two places and I'm just going to make it catch that in that one place. Hold that down and get a bit of um, a bit of good strong sticking. Then I'm going to get another one of those and this time I'm going to decoupage it but I'm going to take off that fine little strand that I've got there, take off a few of these little petals that we've got. So that one in particular, this one that's just coming out from the side, I'm going to take that off. Make sure your lines are nice and, nice and clean and nice and straight. I'm going to take that one from out the middle there, just snip that and what else? And I'm going to take that piece out from there. So I've made that quite a, a little bit smaller. And now we're going to go back into our glue gel, put that just one small piece of it, just there will be enough. And our wet glue, and this is a great technique, guys, it really does give you control over what you're doing, because these fine stems can be quite hard to line up. But if you use that wet glue, you'll get it in place. It dries firmly. And look now how much dimension I've created with that. And then I'm going to take this one, and this one is just going to go behind like that. And to make that stick, I'm going to put a little bit of glue there and there. I'm going to put some glue down this stem, and I'm going to lay this over the top like that. And use those elements of it to actually make sure that I've got my dimension. I'm just going to, I need that to stick together. So I'm gonna to have to give that a, just a little, a little bit of pressure for a minute, which means I might have to just lift my 
glue gel because I could have flattened it, which I did. I've certainly pulled it out of line. I'm going to trim this away from the bottom. Let's get you in there. I need my glue there. Just touch that flower. So it gives it so much more dimension when you can see it like this. I do want this little swan on or little signet on his tummy. So I want a couple in the water. So I'll put a couple of them just there. And then I've got another one somewhere. Where has he gone? Um, I'll get some more. Another little signet is going to go, not that one. I've got another one that faces better. That's got a better look. I've got three, three signets, which is great because you've got lots of choice. And let's get some of them out. So you can see I've got one going that way. I've got that one going that way. And I've got this one with a little bit of water. And I think I'm just going to put him. Do I want him on his tummy? No, I'm going to put him right down here. So these little signets are in the water. And again, we'll get some of our glue gel. And let's pop him just there. So he's just swimming up. Little bit of curiosity. These two are right over here, wondering what's going on. And they're, they're not as brave. So we'll just get our little ones here. I need to give them names, guys, by the way. So mum is looking for them. She's nowhere to be found at the moment. But she'll appear in the next project. And I'm just going to pop that one just there so they're right together and because there's so many of them this one is just going to tuck in behind here so we've got those little little um, signets all looking at where they're going now a couple um, oh, we've, have we got names coming in or is this just you, Andrew? Oh, Andrew's calling, wants me to call them Raphael, Donatello, Leonardo and Michelangelo. That's a bit of a mouthful. Can you imagine the mum yelling to them? Um, we need to do turtles. I've had a request for turtles. I'm going to do some turtles. I've got a lovely lady in America who's asked us to do some turtles. Now... Let me just, a wallaby, oh, wallabies. I think that might be a consideration. Okay, so what's this all been about? Well, first of all, using the rocks as little barriers to get things actually in the water and holding and being sort of almost blocked so they have to stay where they are. Then looking at how we can create dimension and a story with the design. And then finally, anywhere that you get sort of rocks together, you get bits of grasses and things floating and you get elements that sort of are holding everything together. So I'm just going to go into this one. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name. Um, I am going to have a chat with Jess, though, and see if she can come up with some that are a little bit easier for me because I'm not brilliant at this. And it's certainly embarrassing when I can't even pronounce the name of the dye myself. Um, so, it's all right, you mate. Well, yeah, Andrew thinks we nailed it, the dure, but I'm not quite convinced myself. So, what we've got here is, I've just created this little bit of greenery, and it's almost like it's sort of floating in the water. So, can you see how it should have looked like this, there? And what I've done is I've turned it round... And it's just going to go in amongst all these bits of wood. And it's almost as if it's sort of the bits of green that's on the side of the banks that have just um, are just there. So I'm just going to pop that like this in there. And that's a, just a little bit of sort of greenery and floating pieces just held down and... If you get a piece of wood and it's too long or too short, too short, you're going to just add another piece. Too long, 
just do what I've just done. I've just snipped into it and created another piece of wood there. Get that onto here and just tuck that under there. So we've created this sort of like little, that's not gonna stick, this little bit of woodland and a stream and got it all to come together and created our story. So I'm just gonna lift that up and let you see this from the front. But such a simple way of being able to story tell, looking absolutely fabulous. Now, the next one, I want to just do something with our swans because the swans for me are absolutely gorgeous. And I do love my, um, my little otters and, um, but this is, this for me is, is a bit of fun. Now you don't have to get anything else because the swans are part of the otters and the stream. And I need those two. So you need three different sizes and, a, and an extra one for the back. So these two are the back, okay? So same thing, we take this and I know where it is because I measured it last time. I got, I know that that's where this needs to be attached. So like that. I've got no idea why Andrew is laughing. And oh, Donna. Oh. I'm not sure I get this. Okay, everybody, I need to just explain this because nothing worse than you watching and not knowing what the heck's going on. So Andrew, who is my lovely producer, is upstairs in the gallery and he's talking to me through this earpiece. And sometimes it can be anything from what he's had for dinner to what he's having to dinner. Or right now he's having a chat with Donna who's talking about wallabies on the uh, wild wallabies on the Isle of Man. How random is that? And all that time I stay calm, focused, prof <laughs> professional, <laughs> yeah, right. Right, so what we're doing now is I'm gonna build this up in layers. So I want it to look like we're creating some, the water to move. So can you see how I've made it like that? And then I'm gonna put this one here and bring it, and bring it just there, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this away from behind, so I'm gonna go, under this and just don't do it so that it's it's perfect because we want it to sort of have a little bit of movement in it so you can see look i've got it really wiggly this layer only goes on one mil foam tape so it's one millimeter high and i'm going to put it all like that so we're, we're creating i know what it's called it's a weir that's what this is it's like a little weir so that one's gonna go there. I'm not saying that. So, so there we go. I've got a mischief in my ear at the moment. So, so we've created this part of it. So you can, it does look, doesn't it? Like the water's moving. Then this one is the next part of it. And I'm taking this one over to this side and oh, I need to go lower. So I'm gonna come under down there, back to that bit, and then back here to this. And this is one of the great things about reflections because if you make a mistake and you don't like it, you just go back and print it off again. That's, that's great, love that. And you know where you go to get these, don't you? Onto the Highlight Crafts website. So look now, it looks like it's, ca it's cascading, which doesn't that look fabulous? Then, I'm gonna run the risk of doing this now because I, I just wanna show you how, how well it works. So this is my water and I'm just gonna get, and I'm just gonna put the water down there and here. And I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna take my, my um, glue applicator and I'm just gonna bring it like this. So I'm making this water movement here, like this. And I'm just, again, just here. We had a, um, a chat in the week about all the different mediums we could use, but look at how I've got this now. I've got this water movement going on with my glue gel. 
And I think I can take a little bit of that. And it's going to take probably overnight to be properly solidly dry to go in the post. But literally, I found that, uh, you know, an hour and it had gone off and it was it was great for you being able to continue working with it. But look at how I've now created that water movement. And, you know, this was purely by accident. And that's what these Zoom classes are for, too, to be able to share with you ideas and things that we can do. Right, now I'm coming into my swans. And this one, I'm just gonna pop that to one side to let that dry for a minute. And this is the swan that I want. And I need three of them. So I need three of this swan, and I need a couple of babies. So just get some of my little babies. So first, first thing that we're going to do here is I'm just gonna snip away the back wing. So that's the first part of it that's going to come away. And I'm going to lift up this part of the wing a little bit. And then I'm just going to snip into it. Now to snip, use your fingers to support your scissors and you just then can snip like this and the scissors will make sure that you don't go too far with it. So I'm just snipping away like that and I'm using about three to four mil of the tip of my blade. So that's all I'm using and I've got that now with a bit of movement to it and that is going to sit right there and I'm going to use foam for this because I want to be able to press against it when I'm working and that said so that one is going to go like that there and to make sure that we don't get a double beak we're going to put a little bit of glue there and I'm actually going to glue those beaks in place like that so you can see how it looks like it's really quite sturdy i've got dimension a little bit of a bow there from the weather chest chest is and i've i've glued the beak but that is all part of what the effect that we're wanting so it's looking like he's starting to lift himself out of the water then the next one that we're going to do we're going to go into the wing again. I'm going to take this part out again, just as I just did. And this time I'm going to go and I'm going to cut a little bit further. I'm going to cut about um, five to six mil. So again, I've got my fingers in here because I want to make sure those cut lengths are the same every time. So I'm utilizing, making my hand do the work and going in about five mil each time. So you can definitely see that I'm further in than I was. Don't worry if you lose the odd feather because we're actually going to go back and take just one or two of them out. So I'm picking random ones. And if we just cut the wing off and just use the wing, it does look, it does look quite good, but I want you to see this first. So look at what happens if I double layer up that wing that I've got there, how that looks. But then the next part of this is I'm going to, I'm going to cut these two pieces apart and I'm going to go into the water, but I'm actually not going to do what you think I'm going to do. So I'm following the line that I've got and breaking out those pips that I've got just there. I'm going to just slide that piece off. Now, anywhere where my feathers look like they're a bit, um, almost like they're, they're a bit too perfect on the ends, you know, they're a bit straight. I'm going back in and I'm just like feathering, just like when you cut your fringe. Okay, I'm just feathering those little bits in like that. I'll take that piece out, I think. Now my wet glue is gonna go along here. And this is gonna go just there like that. This part is gonna get some um, 
um, pin flare underneath it. So sometimes my head doesn't work as fast as my mouth moves. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that there. So now I've really got dimension to his wing. And then this piece that we cut off here, I need to get some shape to it. So I'm just shaping round. I've got mucky fingers. Getting that shape round there. And then this bit's going to go on. But this is going to get lifted up. So a bit of glue gel there. Get that. A bit more just here. And a tiny bit up there. That bit's going to go there. And this then is going to go on like that. So I've got to just line that head up perfectly. Make sure I've got that down. So what should happen, which is just what we're getting now, so just tiny little bit of wet of dry glue. Um, well, it's wet glue, but glue that not non-dimensional glue, just there. But look at how I've made his body stand out with the extra little bit that I've done here by bringing his wing and then this as a separate piece. Now, if you don't separate the two, the paper just will not allow you to make that movement. It just doesn't like that shape and you get crinkles in it. But I've really been able to make that swan look totally dimensional. And then when I bring it back into this story, if I pick somewhere, oh, I don't want to go, I want to keep my rocks. Mm, no, I'm going to have to go in here. And I build it in here. So I then get my glue gel back. Let's get some from here. Take that over the edges. So we're blending it in. So I'm now blending that in like that. Okay. Now I've got a little signet. And this little signet is going to go on the back of his mummy. And he's going to get tucked in. Just it needs a little bit more glue. And if you've just joined us, everybody, it's pretty exciting, this collection, because you've got so many elements in it and different things that you can do with it. But it's also going to be one that I think you'll take elements from and you'll use every now and again to create other designs. So I'm just going to push our little signet in there like that. And you can see tucked in just there. And this little signet is called Percy. So he's there sitting with his mum while this one is just swimming, tucked in, swimming along like that with his friend who is just down here, swimming along. So you've got them all together I've got some pieces of wood just at the side that I'm just going to just extend a little bit. Let's put a bit of floating wood so you can see I've got elements of it. Tuck it behind pieces. So these are the parts that you, know, you can, and I love the way you can lay this up. Just, you know, just like you're building a fire with logs, the little logs all come together. And then we need some flowers. So let's have a think about what we've got. I think it would look quite good to get some real strong greenery in here and build this to the front of the design. So to do that, I'm going to put quite a decent amount of glue gel in two places. So I'm going to use that to link the two sets of flowers that I've got. Trim off that piece because we need that to stay flat. We've got the dimension that we've got in there. So really getting some good dimension with this design. I'm going to take this piece. So without the big leaf, because I don't need that, put a little bit of my wet glue on here and I'm just going to tuck that right into there so I've got my florals coming together 
And actually, I think I'm pretty pleased with that. Maybe just a little bit of wild garlic in the background. Do we need that? No, I don't think we do. Do you know what? I'm going to lift that up and let you have a look at it because I'm pretty chuffed with the way my water and my stream has come together and I open up my card. Oops, oh, dear me, it's fallen off. Right, I better get some glue on that. So let's make that stick this way. So there we go. And there. Yeah. Okay. So really, this is all about getting that extra dimension to the swan. Getting the swan so that you can see, just almost sort of settling, but getting, but sort of navigating the water that we've got here. And I'm not liking the way that these two elements are just so straight and rigid at the top there. So I'm gonna go into my collection and I'm just gonna find something that I could use to break that up. And I think probably something from here might be the best bet because it's gonna be a different part of the greenery and it might just finish off that element. I think just hiding in there would be a good way of getting some dimension. So to stick this down, I've got to be careful because of course the front of it is still quite wet. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue inside. So I've, try and put your, you know, get all your bits in before you, you put your water down. So I'm just going to pop that in there, lift that piece forward and tuck that in. And I think that's a little bit better. Yes, definitely that extra little bit of just foliage. And just because I can, I'm just going to take out that top little bit there. And I think that's more balanced and a better finish. So everybody, what you've got is you've got your Babylon Brook story You've got being able to build the designs with all the elements that we've got. Creating these precious little treasures that you can pass around everybody, but also with some really cute little characters. And then you can see the different elements. So using that glue gel to put and make that water so that it does look like it's sort of a little flowing stream. And don't forget that that die where you've got your nested image die, take all of those nested shapes and layer them and offset them to the side so that you can create more dimension. Just gonna quickly show you where you find your reflections because it's on the Highlight Crafts website. There you'll see Babbling Brook, you just click on that and then go in there and you'll find, you will find everything um, when the website's working. It's not working at the moment. There we go. And go down at the bottom, there's all your, your reflections. So everybody, remember, we've got some great savings for you today. Um, thank you so much for your company. Now, I am hoping you are going to come and see us at Doncaster. We're expecting it to be a busy show, but I think it's going to be phenomenal. We have got some great deals. We've also got some show specials that will be available to everybody else at a later date. Um, we're going to be broadcasting live with Create and Craft and David's going to be bringing you something new. And um, we've also got literally hundreds, I think over a thousand free make and take places. So we're all prepping busily, putting kits together. But in the meantime, a massive thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Don't forget you can buy it as a complete collection. You can buy the babbling brook on its own. You can buy, buy the stream on its own. You can buy the whole thing, whichever way make the most of the fact that we've got some gorgeous designs for you. So we'll see you all soon. Lots of love and um, yeah, I'll see you at Doncaster. Take care.